Well, tonight we're learning about a fatal vehicle versus train crash that took the life of a 17 year old as local tribal officers were pursuing the teenager's vehicle. Why did they chase my son? It didn't make sense to me. There was like two or three conflicting stories and I didn't understand any of them. I drove out there to where they had their police station. They just shut down and left. There was a life taken and you guys just closed everything down without giving the family any answers. This police force was not trained well. The failure of the tribal police department, it was expected. It seemed like something bad was bound to happen. I don't have all the answers of what really happened to Braven out there. Something's not right. I want to put some different flowers out for him. Blossom Old Bull is searching for answers. Her son, Braven Glenn, was killed in a police pursuit in 2020. A few days later, the police department itself disbanded without any explanation to Blossom or the community. Years later, she's still trying to piece together exactly what happened on November 24th, 2020. And this is just what I got from online. I'm Samantha Michaels, a criminal justice reporter at Mother Jones. I had been talking with Blossom for about a year by the time I visited her in 2023. This is what I got. Just like that, and it was stapled together. Can I see it? Yeah. Raven was a quiet and funny kid. He was just unique. He was funny. He was special. The main thing that he loved was basketball, shooting hoops. Raven was a mama's boy. He stuck around me a lot. He was the only child to say that he was going to live with me forever. And None of the other kids would say that, but he, he would say he was going to live with me forever, even after he grew up. The site of his crash is a 15-minute drive from Blossom's house. There it is right there. That's where they said he came off of the road. That's where the car had burned. There's pieces of it right there still. After the crash, an investigator from the Federal Bureau of Indian Affairs, or the BIA, said that her son was clocked going 90 miles per hour. The police chased him, and he crashed head on into a train. But that didn't sound like Braven. He was a good student, an athlete, and he was known to be a cautious driver. And another red flag. Two witnesses said Braven was alive after the crash, that he called out for help for about 30 minutes while officers stood by and provided no medical attention. Blossom was given little more information about the crash. I finally got the strength to get over to the police department because I wanted them to give me answers. 
I came up to the door and I was like pulling the handles and I was like trying to see if I could see through the paper because it was totally covered with paper. Why would they have it closed up right after this happened to Braven? Who do I talk to? The tribal police had shut down. The BIA would not answer her questions. And at first, the county couldn't even produce his death certificate. And that was the that was the hardest thing. It's like, what do I do? What do I do? How do I get answers? One of the only reports Blossom did receive was a toxicology report that showed Braven was drunk and had THC in his system at the time of his death. But those results, on their own, didn't explain the rest of it. More than a year after his death, Blossom still didn't know the name of the officer who chased Braven. She still didn't have a police report or dash cam footage that could help her understand how the pursuit had unfolded. That's the reason why we came out to try to figure out, like, what really happened to him. Blossom moved her family to the Crow Nation in 2017, when Braven was in the eighth grade. You know, it was mostly mainly for family and culture, because they did not know their Crow culture. That's one thing that you can't take from Native people is their family and getting together and, and doing things like our powwows and our, our gatherings and stuff like that, because that's all we have now to hold on to, basically. It's just, it's beautiful. We are such beautiful people. Even though I'm not from here, it gives me a sense of pride that this is where my kids are from, you know, and this is who they are. You know, I haven't lived on the reservation for like many, many years. Um, and I didn't realize that it was as dangerous as it is now. Like, it was never this way. The federal government continues to cut funding to tribes. It's a continuous cycle of what to do with Indian reservations. The Crow Nation has an alarmingly high rate of missing and murdered indigenous people. It's an international problem called the MMIP crisis. How big is the MMIP issue? The state of Montana is filled with the blood of our people. You can almost drive anywhere, and you can point and say, we know that person. I remember him. I remember her. And not a damn thing has ever been done. Before 2020, the federal government controlled policing in the Crow Nation, providing only a handful of officers to patrol an area two-thirds the size of Connecticut. Well, concerns about crime and a lack of law enforcement leading the Crow tribe to declare a state of emergency last week. The tribe's chief executive, Chairman A.J. Not Afraid, unsuccessfully lobbied the federal government to fund a new tribal police department. The Crow tribe has a treaty, and the government did say that they would uphold the treaty. And along those lines is safety and welfare of the Crow people. In June of 2020, the tribe used a portion of its federally provided COVID relief funds to establish its own police force. The department's quick launch and sudden closure is still shrouded in mystery. Little of the story can be found in the public record, but I spoke to someone who was inside at the beginning. The department's founding police chief, Terrell Bracken. From the time the chairman said we're doing this, I was given one month to get all the equipment ordered and tell the officers, you're hired, come to work. We were literally building an airplane as we were flying it. I was excited because we were creating something of our own. And I was hopeful that there would be more compassion for the people for our missing murdered. Yet, it did not turn out that way. The cracks showed right away. The department was obviously under-resourced. Well, this was an old subway building, and it was supposed to be a police department, but we still had the subway sign up. 
we still got many people coming and knocking and trying to buy sandwiches. Shiloh Badbear, a former dispatcher at the Tribal Police Department, offered Blossom a rare tour of the former station, nearly three years after the department shuttered. You walk in, you still have your subway sandwich display area right here, and they would also leave the assault rifles just laying around anywhere. When they first asked me if I wanted to dispatch, I, I told them I have only got 10 months of dispatching experience. And they had all these girls and they were expecting me to train these girls. And that raised like a big red flag. We currently have no radio service. We have no cell phone service. We have no ways, unless we had a sat phone, we wouldn't have any way to communicate with anybody. I've said it time and time again, I'm, and like, no offense to you, but this place was a joke. It was. It was a joke. Blossom's quest to understand her son's death was slow and solitary. She felt like her appeals to powerful law enforcement agencies were met with indifference. Eventually, Blossom filed a lawsuit against the federal government over Braven's death. Since then, we have gotten a little bit of, you know, answers, but not as much as we want. Blossom's search for answers isn't entirely unique. In 2023, a federal commission found that Native families are, quote, too often left in the dark for days, weeks, or months, causing enormous stress after deaths and disappearances on reservations. After the crash, the BIA had denied Blossom's request for information through the Freedom of Information Act. So this was the FOIA request that I filed uh, to the BIA. As a journalist, my requests were treated differently. Here was the response. I was granted access to a trove of BIA investigative documents, documents that Braven's mother would now see for the first time, nearly three years later. Separately, Blossom's lawsuit unlocked new evidence, which included, at long last, the officer's dash cam footage. In the moments just before Braven passes the tribal officer, the officer was traveling around 10 to 15 miles per hour under the speed limit. And here's a quote. The black Chevy Malibu, so Braven's car, mm -hmm. makes a legal pass of the police car. And then the black Malibu, upon passing the police car, applies the brakes, traveling within the speed limit. The officer called in to her dispatch and said that Braven had passed her going 90 miles per hour. Braven is still driving close to the speed limit when the officer activates her lights. He slows, but doesn't stop. The officer turns on her siren. He accelerates. Her car was traveling 109 miles per hour, so the chase really starts. We don't know what went through Braven's mind at this point, but Braven's family says he was afraid of the police According to court records, he told them he'd been physically assaulted by another tribal officer earlier that year. Braven's car then pulls off the side of the road. Braven turns off his headlights. It's a tactic drivers sometimes use to hide from police. And the officer see, sees Braven's car go up onto the railroad tracks. And then he's hit by the train. I describe pursuits as being a little bit like dynamite. Sometimes it's the right tool to use, but because the tool is so dangerous, you have to make sure that the circumstances are appropriate before you use it. Seth Stoughton is a law professor, a former police officer, and an expert on police use of force. Failing to stop for a speeding violation, is it worth us endangering public safety, the safety of the officer, and the safety of the fleeing suspect just to catch someone who was speeding and then failed to stop? The answer to that question, I think, is usually no. We also got the 
Crow Police Department's policy and procedure manual. Have you seen this? Mm -mm. The part that I found most interesting was here. The decision to initiate a pursuit must be based on the pursuing officer's conclusion that a compelling need is established and that the immediate danger to the public created by the pursuit is less than the immediate or potential danger to the public should the suspect remain at large. So basically the police officer should weigh if Braven keeps driving, is that going to create more of a danger to the public than if I chase after Braven and we potentially get into a crash. And it says here, a compelling need does not include the mere act of fleeing, even if reckless. Under the terms of that policy, as you just articulated it, there's no way that this pursuit was in policy because you have a traffic violation and then failure to stop, neither of which establishes the compelling justification for the pursuit. It appears that the officer's decision to pursue and then maintain that pursuit violated the agency's policies. It angers me, because we knew all along that there was something not right. We've been saying it from the beginning, there's something not right about this. After my interview with former police chief Terrell Bracken, I told him that Blossom wanted to meet with him. He agreed to talk with her. Bracken was not at the department when Braven died. We'll just get comfortable, well, or as comfortable as we can. But maybe he could provide Blossom with some context, or even answers, after her years-long search. I know you didn't have anything to do with, you know, what happened to Braven, and I'm not blaming you at all. But the thing is, is my question is, they spoke together for more than two hours. You took on a hard, hard job, something that I don't think could set up a police department and overnight, you know. I'm not gonna sit here and try and tell you that the way that that tribal department came together was perfect because it wasn't. But we all had the best intent. We were all trying to do our best. Blossom asked why non-natives, like the officer involved in Braven's crash, were brought in to police the tribe. They spoke about that officer at length. And Blossom shared the questions she was left with upon learning of Braven's death. Who was involved and why? Why, why was this happening to my child when they died? You know, why was this person chasing my child? What made it's so important to chase him till he died. If she would have backed off and not pursued it like aggressively like she did, there would probably be, be a different outcome. The end result is not anybody's choice, but the decision to maintain the pursuit, I think 95 out of 100 officers, if not 100 out of 100 officers, would have continued that pursuit. I really don't think so. With what I know, I just, I really don't think so. It's not like ever said, gonna make sense to you. It's not because I will never stop believing that his death was senseless. It was senseless. He was a kid. He didn't deserve to die that way. He did not. It's hard trying to find answers and trying to grieve at the same time. It's like I haven't grieved my son. Trying to grieve and then like let things go, but yet we can't. I can't. For Blossom, Getting answers does help, but it's not enough. It doesn't bring accountability or even an apology. Knowing what happened doesn't change that it did happen. It's painful. It's painful to just have my son just be a memory now.
I want there to be change. I don't want this to happen to anybody's child. I can't bring my son back, but I could try to do something while I'm here. Kind of like sit it up or lay it down, huh? There we go. Even, even when he was 17, he would sit on mom's lap. Sit on mom's lap. I'm, I'm, I'm going to live with you forever, huh, mom? Yep. Yep. Patting his back. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's most Native Americans don't have a word for goodbye. It's just, I'll see you again. Like in Crow and Lakota, we believe it's never goodbye. One day we're going to see them again.